Okay, so here's the last part. Um, we've generated the geometry file, we generated, generated the mesh file, and now we're going to read these into MATLAB. Now, just to recall, what we're going to read in is this triangular elements in the interior here, right? Remember, that has physical ID equal to 9. So the GMesh file, that denotes that region. We're also going to read um, the line elements on this edge. And that's physical ID, I forget what it is, what I have it here, let me, let me peek. Um, I think it's 12. It's 12, right, that's 12. This is physical ID 12. Remember, you can check those in your GMesh file. Do I have GMesh open? I have it closed. By the visibility thing, or you can just look at the, <clears throat> Physical line 12 is the one that connects the line 5, 7, and 6. That edge, okay? All right. And lastly, on this domain, which is physical ID 11, we want to read in just the node IDs on this. So we don't want the connectivity, we want the node IDs. Okay? So we need to read in the nodal coordinates. For all the nodes, we need to read in the element connectivity matrix for the domain, PID9. Then we're going to read in the connectivity of two node line elements on PID12. And finally, we're going to read in just a vector or array of the nodes IDs on this domain. Because we, this is essential boundary condition. We just need to constrain those degrees of freedom. We don't need to integrate on them, so I don't need the connectivity, okay? So it's three steps. Then we're actually going to have to do a little renumbering in general, and then I'll plot stuff out. So uh, in here, there's several MATLAB functions. Like I said, these are the ones that uh, I've written, and I'll post these along with these examples. Well, actually, I should take it back. This one will read them. These are the ones that are the general functions to, to process the GMesh file. This is the MATLAB script file that actually reads that in and plots it. Okay. So read nodes, reads in the node coordinates, read elements, reads in the element connectivity. You can use this by setting the PID to either read in the elements on the domain or the line elements on an edge. And then also you can read in uh, node IDs on an edge. So this is read node set. This is a set of IDs. That's what we're going to do on this essential boundary condition, just to get the IDs. Now, as it turns out, GMesh will not always number the nodes so that they start at one and they're consecutively numbered. Sometimes it'll skip numbers which actually will screw up some of the scattering we'll do with some of the degree of freedom map constructs we'll do later on. So in general, we want to renumber everything so it starts at 1 and then the nodes progress, which means that we also have to renumber all the connectivity. So that's the, um, this function does that. And then the last one we're going to use is this plot mesh function, which just plots various finite element meshes. Okay. All right, so here's the MATLAB file that I've written. I kind of, I was going to do this as I went, but I figured it's just best to write it in because I could comment everything. So the first thing we do, obviously, is clear. So this clears all the nodal variables. Then I usually just define some of the variables that are specific to this input file. So first, the name of the mesh file. So that's example. So we just define a variable that's a string, example1.mesh. So that's the file we write in. Then usually I define the physical ID for the domain. That's 10 in this case. Why well, I called it 9? It should be 10. I got this the wrong way. This is actually not 9. This is 10. 10, 11, 12. And then the uh, physical ID associated with the essential boundary condition, that's 11. That's the node set edge. And then the natural boundary condition, physical ID. 
Now you can actually, if you have multiple ones, you can make a vector of these, and that's fine too, and we'll look at that. So, so that's all we've done here. Maybe I can put a debug and we can go step by step. So let's run. So here you can see we've just defined those variables. Now the next line here, we're going to actually read in the node coordinates. So not only do we read in the node coordinates, but we read in the node ID for each one of those nodes. So the node coordinates, remember, is just a matrix of x, y, z for each node. But if you have a mesh, I'll just pick a real simple mesh like this. Let's say I call this node 2, 3, 6, and 8. So this one might be associated with node 2. This one might be no associated with node 3. This might be associated with node 6. And this might be associated with node 8. So this is what I was saying before. Gmesh will not always number these consecutively in one offset. So sometimes it screws it up. Well, it doesn't screw it up, but sometimes it just, you know, for example, this point here is off the grid, so it uh, writes those as well, even though you don't use them in the connectivity. So in fact, this vector here is the node ID vector. This tells you that the node in the first row actually is referred to as node 2. So in any connectivity, like the connectivity for this element is 2, 3, 6, this tells you that node 2 actually corresponds to the first row in the node coordinate matrix. So we'll end up doing some renumbering because of that, but, but that's what's going on here. So this reads in the node coordinate matrix and then this vector of the node IDs. So if this is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then, then everything's good, but in general it's not. So let's do that step. So now you see we've read in the nodes and the node ID. So node is 149 by 3. So obviously each three columns and there's 149 nodes. So you can see you know, node looks something like that. The, the Z coordinate is 0 for everything. And then if I look at the node IDs, let's see how this works out. See, this, I think this one works out okay, because this just tells me that the first row is node 1, node 2, node 3, is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It looks like it, you know, I'd have to check all of them, see what it skipped any, but it looks like it did it right. So actually, I, in this case, I probably don't need to renumber. But in general, you might need to renumber them, so I'll show you. Okay, so that read in. So next thing we want to do is read in the connectivity of the domain. So that's the connectivity with physical ID 10. So we're going to use this function read elements. Actually, for all these functions, you can use the help. So if I do help read elements, you can see it tells you how to use the function. So for example, you can do read file name. And we're actually going to, it'll return the element connectivity in here, and then a vector of element IDs, and then actually another vector which tells you what type of element this will go to. Try four, three node triangles, four node quadrilaterals, so on and so forth. But actually, for this, for, mo for this class, we'll pretty much just need this. Okay? Now, this is the alternate notation. This one, you give a file name, and then you give a vector of physical IDs. It will only read elements on those physical IDs. So that's what we're going to do. So you can see here, we're going to do the connectivity is equal to the return of the read elements functions, the file name, physical ID 10. Okay? So when I do that, uh, step. Now we've got a connectivity, and you can see. That's the number of elements, so the first element connects nodes 62 to 18 to 19, and so on and so forth. All right. The next step here is I'm going to read in the connectivity on the natural boundary condition edge. So it's the same type of call, except we're changing the PID to 12, because that's the natural boundary condition PID, physical ID. All right. Now this is going to return a connectivity of line elements. So if we do this, we step. Now you see edge 
has the connectivity line elements. You can see it's a 9 by 2. So again, there's just two nodes, so that's the connectivity. So the first edge connects node 5 to 45, the second one 45 to 46, so on and so forth. And finally, we want to read the node IDs on the top edge. So these are the top edge node IDs. We're going to use that with this function read node set. So do health read node set. And all that does is if you give it a mesh file, gmesh file name, and then the physical ID, it reads back the vector with all the IDs that are on that edge. Okay, so now, top edge nodes. You can see this is just 20 nodes. Each one of those, I'm going to try to point to it, but you can't see it. So on that top edge is nodes 3, 4, 24, 25, 26, da, 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 to 41. All right, so that's the reading in stuff. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes GMesh will not number things consecutively, or sometimes it'll skip a node because maybe there's a node that's not used in the mesh or something like that. So there's also these renumbering functions. And actually, it's all just using renumber, and, and, and it's three steps, really. The first one, we renumber the... Uh, element connectivity and the node coordinates and this basically does some juggling and makes sure that we don't need to use node ID anymore and it will also make sure that when I say this element connectivity is like one two three one corresponds to the first row in the node coordinate matrix right? so that you don't have this situation so in fact after the renumbering it rehashes all this out so this would be like one two, three, four, and it would change the connectivity. So this connectivity would be now one, two, three, which tells you directly that the first node points to the first row, two goes to this one, and then three goes to this one. And then it doesn't change the node ID, but this should be one, two, right? As if it were numbered that way. Like I said before, for this one, it looks like I didn't really need to do that, but just sometimes you might. So it's, it's useful just to keep that in there. The next line, oh, okay, the third thing that it gets you is this node map. So the nice thing about the node map, this is kind of a, this takes a little bit of time because it has to rehash some stuff. So node map, once you do this once, you can use the same node mapping to renumber everything else. So here we're using the node map generated from this to renumber the top edge nodes and also to renumber the edge connectivity. So that's the next two steps. Step, step. And actually you can do help renumber. I think this is a little more verbose. Well, it's not that. I should probably spell these out a little better, but that's the way it works. So there you go. So now these things have just been renumbered. In fact, I don't think it changed anything, but, but sometimes it does. All right, now the last thing we'll do is we'll plot the mesh. So there's this function called plot mesh, which will plot a mesh. You give it the node coordinate matrix, the element connectivity matrix, and you also have to tell it what type of element it is. So if we do like help mesh. This will plot out two node lines, three node lines, three node triangles, six node triangles, quads, and, some, and a hex eight element. Okay. So we'll step. That clear. Okay, we just, I just need to clear for this step again. So there's the mesh. Looks just like it did in GMesh. And then we'll go back and do another plot mesh, but now I'm just going to plot the mesh of that um, Natural boundary condition edge. And I'm going to plot it in red. And there it goes. I'm going to plot that on top. Just to show you that everything looks reasonable. So that's it. So now you have all the data structures you need. You can run this into your potential flow code. Or when we do the plain st stress code, you can run it into that. Okay? And now you can use GMesh to actually solve some reasonable problems. Okay? All right, so that's it. Like I said, I'll post all these things on WebCT, as well as the plot FE field, which you need it for the potential flow problem as well. Okay.